Grace and peace, my friends, and welcome back to another episode of the Midweek Refill. Today we're talking about unleashing the power within, how you can have a victorious prayer life. And welcome back to today's Bible study, and I'm excited about sharing this teaching with you concerning cultivating a victorious prayer life. You know, prayer is a powerful tool that connects us to God, and it invites His presence into our lives. And in this session, we're going to explore how we can deepen our prayer life, tap into the power of prayer, and experience victory through our communion with God. If you're ready, grab your notes, your notepad, your pen, your Bible, and let's dive in. Join me in a word of prayer as we begin today's session. Heavenly Father, we come before you with humble hearts, seeking your guidance and wisdom as we explore the topic of a victorious prayer life. Open our hearts and minds to your word that it may transform us and lead us into a deeper relationship with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Let everyone say amen. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and do leave a comment. We love to go back and fellowship with you in the comments section. Well, to begin with, concerning developing a victorious prayer life, we have to understand the power of prayer. You see, my friends, prayer is much more than just a ritual or a religious duty. Prayer is actually an avenue through which we can communicate with God himself, the creator of this entire beautiful universe. So let's start by understanding the power of prayer as it is revealed to us in the Holy Writ of God. In the book of James chapter five and verse number 16, the word of the Lord says, the prayers of a righteous person is powerful and effective. You may know it like this, the prayers of a righteous man availeth much. In that passage, James reminds us that our prayers have tremendous power when offered with the right heart. As believers, we have been given the privilege to approach God's throne with confidence, knowing that he hears our prayer. But let's talk about some keys to a victorious prayer life. Because now that we understand the power of prayer, that prayer literally gets God's attention and garners the attention of heaven, let's explore some key principles that can help us cultivate a victorious prayer life. The first of which is developing a relationship with God. Now, building a strong relationship with God is foundational to a powerful prayer life. After all, think about any type of relationship. Building strong relationships requires time, energy, honesty, and effort. In other words, we need to invest time in getting to know God through reading His Word, spending time in worship, and seeking His presence through prayer. Here's the second key. Praying according to God's will for your life. It's important to ask God for what you want, but ultimately you want to ask that God's will will be done in your life. You see, my prayers and your prayers must align with the will of God. You know, in the New Testament, Jesus taught us to pray, your kingdom come, your will be done. So when we pray in accordance with God's purposes, our prayers become way more effective because our prayers are divinely aligned with the plan of God, which by the way, is always going to be better than our plan. Now here's the third principle, persistence in prayer. You see, my friends, persistence in prayer is another vital key to a victorious prayer life. Jesus shared a parable about a persistent widow who continually sought justice from an unjust judge. Her persistence paid off, and Jesus encouraged us to persevere in prayer, knowing that our Heavenly Father hears and answers our cries. But persistence in prayer is the key. 
So when we pray, there are also sometimes some hindrances that can affect our prayer life. So let's talk about overcoming hindrances to prayer. Because despite the power and the effectiveness of prayer, there can be hindrances that prevent us from experiencing victory in our prayer life. So let's explore just a few of those together that are common hindrances and how we can overcome them. Here's hindrance number one, unconfessed sin. My friends, unconfessed sin can create a barrier between us and God. It is essential to examine our hearts, to confess our sins, and to seek forgiveness, allowing us to approach God with a clean heart. God wants us to come to him, but when we come to him, he wants us to come to him with a clean, pure, open heart. And the only way to do that is to confess our sins to God. Here's hindrance number two, lack of faith. Jesus emphasized the importance of faith in prayer. You see, doubt and unbelief can hinder our prayer life. Strengthening our faith through studying God's word and meditating on his promises can help us to overcome that hindrance of a lack of faith because the more of God's word you eat and digest and ingest, the stronger you become spiritually and the stronger your faith becomes. But here's hindrance number three, it is distractions. Now, in our fast-paced world, distractions can easily derail our prayer life. It's crucial to find a quiet place, free from distractions, where you can really focus your attention on God. Setting aside dedicated time for prayer and creating a prayerful environment can help you to overcome distractions. You know, when you pray and when you're studying your word, turn that cell phone off. Get away from technology so you can connect to divine intel and not just man-made technology. You know, I have gone through many things in my life, many times that my faith began to waver, and I didn't know if God even heard me. But every time I got to a crossroad in my life, I discovered something new about God. I discovered his patience. I discovered his love. I discovered his care for me. I discovered that he's even listening when I don't think he is. And it's my prayer and my hope that as you begin to build and evolve and develop your prayer life with God, that you will take into consideration everything I've shared with you in this teaching. Go back, listen to it again. Look at the handout that is attached to this teaching that will go into even greater detail so that you can discover your own personal testimony as you build your prayer life and build your faith. You know, it has been said that seven days without prayer makes one week. Not W-E-E-K, but W-E-A-K. And I can tell you by personal experience, yes, even though I'm a pastor, even though I'm a consecrated bishop in the Lord's church, even though I've gone, completed several degrees in seminary and all of that, none of that matters. There have been times in my life when I have been less prayerful. And guess what? I was more weak when I was less prayerful. But the more time you spend with God, and I'm not just talking about in church, I'm talking about in prayer and in study and in personal meditation time, the stronger you become as a Christian. God has so much in store for you. Don't miss your blessing by neglecting your prayer life. And maybe there's a preacher or a pastor who is watching or listening to me right now. We can be guilty of only studying the word to get the next sermon to deliver on a Sunday or for some preaching engagement. But my friends, I'm here to tell you that the preaching that we do to the people has to be an overflow of our own personal study time. 
I love the analogy of a mother bird who goes and gathers worms and whatever things birds like to eat. And a lot of times that bird will bring those items back to the nest, but then there are times that sometime in the animal kingdom that the mother will chew and swallow and then regurgitate it and then the babies eat from the nutrients of what has come out of the parent. That's how I look at this journey of leading people. And I want you to listen closely to this, whether you're a Sunday school teacher or you, you teach the children at church or whether you work with the choir, whether you are a choir member, you are a minister in the church. You may not have the title, you may not have the robes, the crosses and the, uh, the collars and the, the certification and the paperwork, but you are a minister in the church as a deacon, as a trustee. As a lay member, you are a minister for Jesus Christ. But you cannot feed if you do not feed yourself. You cannot lead others if you do not feed yourself first. Because what you give to others is only an overflow. It's only a divine regurgitation, for lack of a better word, of what you have put on the inside of yourself. So if you've not put anything in, you cannot bring anything out. That's why effective ministry, again, regardless to your title or your position, effective ministry is ministry that is an overflow of personal time with God. Hey, I love you. God loves you even more. I want to challenge you to spend time with God every single day. I want to challenge you to actually set a special time, whether it's once a day, twice a day, when you read a little and pray and then listen for God to speak back with you because God wants you to go to a new level in your life and God wants to give you new testimonies for your life of what he has done in your life through the power of prayer and Bible study. I love you so much. This is Bishop A. Reginald Littman. I'm the proud senior pastor of the New Mountaintop Church, located 30 minutes west of Atlanta in a wonderful little town called Winston, Georgia. If you're ever in the metropolitan Atlanta area, you owe it to yourself to put a little gas in the tank and head out I-20 and come and see us and be a part of a live worship experience. Until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you as you pursue him and study his word. God bless you.